Hey guys, welcome back. This is the first video in a series of videos on ODBS 2. ODBS 2 is out now and I'm excited to tell you all about it. What is Open World Server? Open World Server, ODBS, is a server instance manager designed to create large, persistent worlds in Unreal Engine. Either by stitching together multiple Unreal Engine maps or by splitting a single large map into multiple zones. OWS will spin up and shut down server instances as needed based on your world population. OWS can load balance your world across multiple hardware devices. OWS can support thousands of players in the same world by instancing up and out. A single zone can be instanced multiple times to support a large population in one area. Areas of a map can also be split up into multiple zones to support a larger population. In addition to server instance management, ODBS also handles persistence for accounts, characters, abilities, inventory, and more. ODBS is not a game server. ODBS uses Unreal Engine server instances. Why ODBS 2? The primary goal of ODBS 2 is to increase scalability and achieve a higher concurrent player count. ODBS 1's monolithic design would likely have been expensive to scale past 10,000 concurrent players. With ODBS 2, our goal is to scale beyond 100,000 concurrent players. ODBS 1 was difficult to install in a local development environment for developers without specific technical knowledge. With ODBS 2 and Docker, Setup in your local development environment is quick and easy. By running ODBS2 locally, you can customize the API to meet your needs. ODBS1 required Windows and Windows servers. ODBS2 runs natively on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Where can I get ODBS? The ODBS API source code is available on GitHub, and the ODBS Unreal Engine plugin is available at the Sabred Art Studios website. The links are on screen. What do I need to run OWS? Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. You'll also need to install Visual Studio 2019 with the ASP.NET and Web Development package installed. That's an optional package, but you're, you're going to need that. You also need either Unreal Engine 4.27 or Unreal Engine 5.0 Preview 2. What technologies and architecture does ODBS use? The ODBS Web API is developed in C-sharp with .NET 5. Previously, this was called .NET Core, uh, but they're now calling it .NET 5. At some point soon, we'll move to .NET 6. The example storage technology is Microsoft SQL Server, but each repository can use its own storage technology. Storage technologies can be easily added by implementing each repository interface. I have examples for um, MongoDB and also for uh, PostgreSQL. And so what you'll be able to do here is you'll be able to customize these storage technology interfaces in the future to be able to work for whatever storage technology your game needs. ODBS uses microservices. Microservices allow ODBS to scale more easily. They allow us to split uh, the APIs across multiple hardware devices to be able to scale up to reach more concurrent users. ODBS uses dependency injection. Dependency injection allows us to easily plug in various implementations to support different services and technologies. ODBS is set up uh, from GitHub to use Docker. What is Docker? Docker allows you to package software into standardized units for development, shipment, and deployment. A container is a standard unit of software that packages up code and all its dependencies so the application runs quickly and reliably from one computing environment to another. A Docker container image is a lightweight, standalone, executable package of software that includes everything needed to run an application, the code, runtime, system tools, system libraries, and settings. 
The default configuration of the ODBS project on GitHub uses Docker for one-click deployment on your local development PC. Docker runs all five ODBS servers in containers. Currently, there's only five ODBS servers. There will be more in the future. It'll keep getting more complex, and so Docker is really going to help us manage that complexity. ODBS can run with or without Docker, but setup, per, setup instructions are currently only available for Docker. Here's the ODBS network diagram. So you can see that there is a laptop and PC here. These are the game clients, and they're connecting over the internet to the public API, the zone servers, in the future chat servers. And then you can see that there is a firewall separating the other ODBS APIs, such as Instance Management API and Character Persistence API, as well as the ODBS database or databases. And so what happens here is that only the public API or the zone servers can get through the firewall. And this gives you an added level of security as to what outside agents can get to, as they can't directly make calls to the Instance Management API or the Character Persistence API. It has to be done through the public APIs. Zones and shards. This is big in ODBS. Zones represent an Unreal Engine map or area of an Unreal Engine map that a single Unreal Engine server controls. Unreal Engine maps can be split up into multiple zones, and zones can have multiple shards. By splitting your world into zones and then sharding those zones, you can achieve the concurrent player count your game requires. Players in different zones and shards of zones can only see or interact with players in the same zone or shard. Zone servers and zone server instances. Zone servers are hardware devices that are designated to run zone server instances. One or more zone server instances can be registered with ODBS. A zone server instance is an Unreal Engine server instance. A zone server can run one or more zone server instances. A zone server instance can represent an Unreal Engine map or a section of an Unreal Engine map. More than one zone server instance can be run per zone, we call these shards, to allow more players in that zone. A zone server instance can be configured with a soft player cap and a hard player cap. New shards are spun up when the soft player cap is met. What is included in ODBS2? ODBS2 includes the ODBS Unreal Engine plugin, the ODBS Instance Launcher, the ODBS Public API, the ODBS Instance Management API, and the ODBS Character Persistence API. In the future, more APIs will be added to ODBS. The ODBS Unreal Engine plugin contains the code and data structures required to make requests to the ODBS APIs. The ODBS Unreal Engine plugin will be kept up to date for the latest versions of Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. The ODBS Instance Launcher accepts requests from the ODBS Instance Management API and spins zone server instances up and down as needed. The ODBS Instance Launcher can be installed on as many zone servers as needed to support your game. When the ODBS Instance Launcher starts, it registers itself with the ODBS Instance Management API. The ODBS Instance Launcher is installed on each zone server that needs to run zone server instances. Each zone server is registered with ODBS. This allows the ODBS Instance Management API to know at what IP each hardware device can be found. Here's the basic idea of how it works. When a player presses the Select Character button in the ODBS Starter project, an API call is made to the ODBS Public API. This API call includes which zone the player is trying to connect to. It may also be sending that they want to connect to the most recent zone that they've connected to. So that's, that's another option. The ODBS public API then makes a call to the ODBS instance management API. The ODBS instance management API will check for any available zone server instances 
already running to see if there is any capacity left. If there is, it will connect the player to that zone server instance. If there is no zone server instance running for that zone, or there is no extra capacity, the ODBS instance management API will select a zone server and send a message to the ODBS instance launcher on that zone server to spin up a new zone server instance. When the zone server instance is started and ready for players to connect, the player will be connected to it. The ODBS public API handles all requests that come directly from the game client. This includes API requests to register, log in, and create characters. Because the ODBS public API handles requests directly from the game client, it must be exposed publicly. This means it's in front of the firewall. So your users and game clients and people on the internet can directly hit this public API. The ODBS Instance Management API handles requests to manage zone server instances. Since the ODBS Instance Management API only receives requests from the ODBS Public API and other zone server instances, the ODBS Instance Management API is not exposed publicly. This means it's behind the firewall and it cannot be directly accessed from the internet. The ODBS Character Persistence API handles requests to persist character data. Since the ODBS Character Persistence API only receives requests from Unreal Engine server instances, the zone server instances, the ODBS Character Persistence API is not exposed publicly. This one's also behind the firewall. Here are some future ODBS2 APIs. The ODBS Inventory API, the ODBS Groups API, the ODBS Chats API. These three were in ODBS1. They've been temporarily removed. Uh, because we're going to be building a new and better version. So look for those to come soon. Also, at some point in the future, I'd like to add an ODBS World Builder API. And I think it'd be cool to also have an ODBS Loot Generation API. There's many more APIs we could add, and there also are APIs you can add. And in a future video in this series, I'll show you how to add your own API to ODBS 2. Common ODBS questions. How many players can ODBS support? That's a tough question. As I said before, we are trying to reach 100,000 concurrent users. It's hard to say whether that can be achieved or not because we don't really have a way to test 100,000 players. What I'd like to do at some point in the future, I'm gonna try to do a video on this, is to try to show via estimates that we could reach that number. We could do this by setting up a test case of a smaller number of servers and show that we can reach a certain count and what resource usage that might entail. And then we can try to extrapolate that out to what would that look like at 100,000 concurrent users. So we can't really give an exact number here. Our goal is to support uh, 100,000 or more concurrent users. Hopefully we can achieve that. Are transitions between Zoho server instances seamless? They are not. This is an issue with how the Unreal Engine itself works. You could potentially modify the engine so that it has some kind of semi-seamless nature. And there are a few people who have done this. I've seen examples of it. Uh, it mostly is around this idea of there's, there's an object in Unreal Engine called uWorld. It contains all of your, everything that's in your world. And when you call client transfer, which is how we move between zone server instances, it unloads uWorld. So the basic idea of this is that you would not call the unload on the world, but it ends up being more complex than that. You also have to send data to create your character on the zone server instance you're traveling to before you actually transfer to it. So it has something to connect to. It can get complicated. Anyway, it is not currently supported in ODBS 2. Can players on one zone server instance see players on another zone server instance? They cannot. Uh, there's nothing stopping you from sending data between the zone server instances so that you could, but you would have to build that. It's not included in ODBS 2. How many players can each zone server instance support? So zone server instances in and of themselves don't really have anything to do with ODBS or ODBS 2. So ODBS 2 is not modifying how many players you can support in each zone server instance because a zone server instance is just an Unreal Engine server instance. 
So for that, you will have to rely on data uh, of what other people have done with Unreal Engine server instances. We know that Fortnite has 100 players on a server instance and they've done a video series showing all the things they had to do to reach that. They have something called the OWS, or, I'm sorry, not OBS. They have something called the replication graph. There is an example in ODBS of how you could use a replication graph, which is why I said ODBS replication graph. This can be used to try to achieve higher players per zone server instance, but it's all gonna come down to your game. It's all gonna come down to what actions are players taking in your game and at what rate can they take those actions and how efficiently are you handling all of that? So it's not going to have to do with ODBS. The answer of how many players each zone server instance can support is going to be all up to your game and the engine. What's next in this series? I'm going to be doing some videos and here's some of the ones that I'd like to do. I may also be adding additional ones. And if there are ideas for a video that you have, please share them in the comments. I'd like to show how to connect to the database with SSMS, that's SQL Server Management Studio, and run basic SQL queries. This is something you'll need to do a lot. And so I plan on doing that in the next video. I also want to show how to customize ODBS by implementing an interface. So I said before that ODBS2 uses dependency injection. That allows you to wire up interfaces, implementations at runtime. This means that you can easily take one part of ODBS2 and replace it with your own custom code. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a video. I wanna show you how to add your own API to ODBS. This is going to be really useful. I'm gonna show you a prime example of where this is needed when creating characters and setting up initial stats for characters, this is a great spot to add your own API to do server-side validation while not connected to a zone server instance. I also want to talk about understanding RabbitMQ. There is a UI for RabbitMQ that you can use during uh, debugging and troubleshooting and managing uh, ODBS2, and I want to show how to do that. I also want to show how to deploy ODBS to the cloud. In this video, I'll probably uh, create a new account on Azure. I think they still have a free account. I'll set one up and I'll show you how you can deploy ODBS to the cloud. There's going to be many ways you can do this, so I'll just be showing you one possible way. I want to talk about the external login providers. This is a way that you can use your own login system or a login such as Epic Online Services, Zola, Steam, anything like that, anything OAuth. And I want to show you how you can create your own external login provider. I also want to show you how you can use your own database with ODPS. This goes back to the dependency injection and the ability to implement your own interfaces and how ODPS 2 is split into separate repositories. So we're going to be taking one of the repositories and writing an implementation for the interface to use a custom database. So I want to show how to do that. If you guys have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments. You can also join the Discord that will be in this video description and ask questions there. Until next time, see ya!